Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast. Thank you very much for joining us here for episode number 855. Hey, it is my pleasure to be here with you right smack dab in the middle of summer. Really happy that you're here. Well, today we're going to talk about fitting in in the FFA, or maybe fitting in if you're not in the FFA, depending on which high school you go to, and the fact that even if you don't come from an agricultural background, yeah, there's still a fit there for you in the FFA. It is a very, very welcoming organization. We're going to be talking with Sam Townsend, and he's coming to us from Scales Mound, well, representing Scales Mound High School in Scales Mound, Illinois, actually coming to us from the University of Illinois. And we're going to be talking about changing majors, fitting in, all the great benefits of being an FFA member. We're going to get that started for you right now. Joining me today is Sam Townsend, and he is coming to us from the Il- uh, University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana, and uh, he is searching for that major right now. He started out with a major and said, I don't know about this one, and so now we're looking. And he's also a former chapter president from Scales Mound High School in Scales Mound, Illinois, and a state proficiency winner in landscape management and a national silver winner in landscape management. So Sam, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. You bet. We're laughing here behind the scenes because uh, in our pre-interview, you commented that I, I pronounced your name correctly, and nobody ever does that. But then, of course, as soon as I start to start to do the interview, I'm screwing that up. Uh, I said Illinois, which I know annoys people. It's Illinois. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just all over the place now. Well, I'll try and recover here, Sam. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. I'd love to start off by just asking you a few questions about you so our audience can get to know who you are. Is that all right? Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Well, how old are you now? I'm 19. Okay. And is this your first year or your second year of college? This is my first year of college. Okay. First year of school. And when you're home, when you're not when you're not there away at school, are you on a farm? Or are you in town or something kind of in the middle of those two? I used to live on a farm, um, and then I moved in town. But like, I still go and visit, um, like the town, the the farm that I used to live on. It wasn't like a full functioning farm, like uh, cows and crops and stuff. But uh-huh. we had horses and stuff. Oh, gotcha. Okay, got it. And so you moved into town, so you've kind of seen both worlds then. Yep, definitely. <laughs> okay. Now, when did you join the FFA? How long have you been part of the group? I joined FFA my freshman year, but I was like involved with it my in junior high. Um, okay. We kind of like took ag classes and kind of felt how it would be in FFA in high school. Okay, what made you join? Why did you want to join this organization? I wanted to join because I didn't really think of myself actually as being like a, a farmer and uh, like going into agriculture. Mm-hmm. But I knew that FFA did way more than just agriculture. It, it um, I was told, and I just saw like how many leadership qualities I could learn, um, like job interview things. It's just all extremely helpful things that mm-hmm. um, I, I saw would help me. Okay. Well, obviously it took, I mean, you wound up being a, an officer and serving as your chapter's president. How did you decide to go into the officer's team? Um, I decided to do that because... Um, one looks very good on uh, resumes and stuff, but it was also it was a new like experience for me to have to actually delve into the leadership uh, mm-hmm. um, positions and actually like see that it's not it's not as easy as some of them make it seem, and uh, kind of go in like in the the back scenes of how things work and stuff. It was um, it was really cool. Okay, good for you. That's great. And are you still are you still involved at all? Are you pursuing an American degree or anything like that? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not pursuing my American degree. I I changed jobs over the summer, and it wasn't necessarily agricultural related or okay. um, or in my essay. Gotcha. Well, you know, I have interviewed a lot of students on this show, and I'd say probably three quarters of them are in high school, but about a quarter of them are out and they're in college like you are. And everyone is always so confident in their majors. And I I changed my major around, or at least I changed the emphasis of my major around a few times uh, to try and help me get through school, honestly, just because uh, what I initially started out with, I just wasn't hacking it. 
But uh, you're the first student I've had on, I think, who is in the midst of going to college and going, well, the major I chose is not going to work out. I'm going to try something different. So I want to ask you about that. How did you, what was your first major when you, when you started, I guess, last fall? So my first major was industrial engineering. And at first I thought, um, I thought that I had the mindset of like an engineer. They kind of have like a, a mindset and yeah. have to see like the technical sides of things. And then once I actually like dove into uh, the things I would be doing um, and then I learned like what I'd be doing in my career later in life, I just found that that wouldn't be what I would want. And mm-hmm. I don't really think I would be happy into doing that. And that's, that's um, on me. So sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's fine. I mean, you don't just cause you pick something you think will work doesn't mean that's what you're going to wind up doing. Yeah, exactly. So how did you figure that out? Did you take a class that exposed you to what the the career life would be like, or was it just research and speaking with people in the industry as you began your college career? It was a little of both. Um, I was very lucky. Illinois is a very good engineering school, and I was uh, exposed to not only just the schoolwork, but also um, speaking with people in the field. But Mm -hmm. I did take a class that... I, um, uh, we dove into each like track option that I would choose. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just found, I didn't really like, uh, any of them. And then talking to engineers and stuff, I just, it, it clicked to me that I was like, this is not really what I want to do with my life. Okay. Got it. So now what majors are you considering now? My first choice, business management and my second choice is act business. Okay, so ag business or business management. So what what shifted you? I mean, engineering is is different than business in the sense that in one, you know, you're just working with two different sets of data and two different yep. emphasis. So how did you, did you always have a business interest or is this something that occurred to you as you were researching? Yes, I was always interested in business. Um, I actually wanted to get into like the business side of engineering. Mm-hmm. Um, but like with with business, it was kind of weird. It just clicked with me one day, and I was like, I, I want I want to do business, and I just feel like I'm more of a business person than an engineering person. Okay. I like dealing with people. I like talking with people. Gotcha. Very interesting. Well, that's really cool. I'm excited for you, and uh, I know that uh, you've, you've got great influences and people there at the University of Illinois to help you, but also I know you did through the FFA as well. Would you mind letting us know who your ag advisors were? Yeah, I had Lisa Ulrich. She was my um, only advisor through uh, FFA, and she was amazing. Great, great advisor. Awesome. Thank you for acknowledging her. It, <coughs> excuse me. And Sam, I want to take a moment just to acknowledge a couple of our sponsors really quick. And everybody, of course, I want to talk about Powder River Livestock Handling Equipment. Just absolutely the most fantastic, best livestock handling equipment you're going to find out there, whether you need a squeeze chute, very strong panels. You need sweep tubs, alleyways, calf tables, whatever it may be. Powder River has been making the finest in this field for well over 80 years, starting out here in the West with some of the wildest cattle you would ever want to deal with. And if they can make equipment that can stand up to those cattle, they can certainly take care of yours, reduce that stress, reduce potential for energy, uh, injury, and make it, a, make it a good working day when you're working your cattle. So please let your local farm and ranch retailer know you'd like to see that Powder River equipment in their yard and check them out at powderriver.com. And of course, everybody, I want to talk about lacrosse footwear. You can find them at lacrossefootwear.com. Done right since 1897, lacrosse footwear has been making quality boots for hunting, working, and tending the land for over a century. And I will tell you what, we use the Alpha Range boots here on our farm every single day uh, in the middle of summer for irrigation, in the middle of winter when it's muddy, icy, it's cold, and we are always got warm, comfortable, and dry feet. And I always love to bring up lacrosse during our FFA episodes because they are proud to support the FFA by annually sponsoring 15 scholarships along with 100 jackets as part of the Give the gift of blue program. So please check them out, lacrossefootwear.com, and slip a pair on your feet. All right, well, Sam, let's talk about what you've been doing for your supervised agricultural experience. I want to learn all about this. All right, so um, what I did, I worked for a uh, landscaping operation. It was called Lordy, uh, Cordy Landscaping, mm-hmm. and I did so many things. I did uh, mulching and weeding plant beds, mowing and weed whipping lawns, uh, leading... I did this uh, quite often, actually. This uh, thing was leading a crew of 
four employees to complete a spring cleanup, okay. which is basically like uh, weeding and mulching plant beds and blowing leaves out of their um, their their plant beds. Right. And then also I set set limestone rock walls with a mini excavator and a skid steer. And um, so like each summer, my responsibilities would increase. Like I started out as being a uh, a mower. I would just mow lawns every day, and then mm-hmm. uh, they noticed. Then they gave me the opportunity to uh, start mulching and uh, weeding plant beds, and they, then they saw that I was pretty adept at that. Um, so then each year, I, I worked there for four years, mm-hmm. and I do help them on and off now still. They gave me the, the, lead, the lead opportunity um, to lead the crew of employees, and then also um, helping sometimes with uh, creating the limestone rock walls and well, that's interesting. Okay. So you you learned all different aspects of the landscaping business then. Exactly. Yep. I yeah. I did. Um, I did a lot. I was pretty close with my boss. He was at, um, my basketball coach, and so okay. I learned a lot from um, like how much the spring cleanups cost and mm-hmm. uh, um, stuff like that. And basically, how to run a full. Um, operational landscaping company you know this landscaping deal is interesting Uh, since i've started interviewing ffa students i've interviewed a number of students in high school that have their own landscaping companies i've interviewed way more than probably five that had to hire somebody just because they didn't have a driver's license yet when they'd started a business like this i mean this is a really really good business and with your interest in business i bet you learned quite a bit about serving customers and and growing and running a business and managing employees throughout this experience yeah exactly i, I learned so much um but yeah customer service was huge because a lot of times the people would be there yeah and they would, you know it's it's their property and it makes sense like they're um they want it to be looking nice they want um, everything to be good. Uh, just be as nice to them as you can. Uh, cause sometimes obviously they are, uh, we would be like a behind on a job or, uh, something. And so you just need to be calm with them mm-hmm. and respectful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Customer service is big and you've got all those people that, uh, you're in charge of and you got to make sure everybody is taken care of, but they're also getting the job done as efficiently as possible. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that and I'm sure this is going to be something that's going to serve you well going forward with, uh, whatever business career you ultimately land in. Yes, definitely. It, it would help me a lot. Was it was it seeing your your basketball coach's business kind of grow and flourish that it was that part of your inspiration to go into business? Yeah, actually, um, oh, I'm very interested in entrepreneurship, but I I just don't know what that thing will be for me yet, uh-huh. obviously. But um, I definitely I think about it a lot. How he literally started with it was just him, and then uh, what he has now is just actually incredible. He, he does work everywhere around the scales bound area and, um, he does a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it just, I, I think about it a lot, how like successful he is and even other small businesses around me, um, how they've started with little to nothing and then made a very good business. So how, how did you translate the success and the responsibility you were given working for the landscaping company to success in the FFA with your state proficiency award and then your silver national award? I, I translated it. Um, it, it just taught me so many intangibles that you can use it anywhere. That's so universal, universal. Like when I got the, the, uh, lead, uh, lead of the crew, uh, of employees that helped me being, in uh, my uh, office that I was when I was president and vice president, it uh, gave me qualities to understand how to deal with people, be empathetic, uh, put yourself in their shoes, things like that. Mm-hmm. And then also like working hard because FFA, it's, it, there's, it's no joke. There's a lot of work that you have to put in for FFA. Yeah. And um, I just made those intangibles universal and that led to my success. So they, they fed on each other, FFA. Um, fed into my success at Cordy Landscaping and Cordy Landscaping um, fed into my success at um, in FFA. That is great. Well, I love to hear that. I think uh, what you're saying is absolutely true. There's a ton you can learn in the FFA that you can apply anywhere, no matter where you go. And obviously you knew that going in. Exactly. Well, that is great. Well, I'll tell you what, Sam, before we wrap this up today, I'd love to ask your advice for another student out there who might be listening. Uh, When you come from a position where maybe you don't see yourself working in agriculture or you don't consider yourself agricultural, 
but you're looking what the FFA has to offer, how would you have a student like that take advantage of everything that's there for them in the FFA? I, there's, it, it's funny you say that. There's so many people in, uh, that I go to college with that have never heard of FFA. Mm -hmm. And I just think, uh, or some that have, they kind of like, um, they would laugh at me and be like, oh, so you're a farmer. And I'm like, no, I, I don't farm. I'm not going into the agricultural field. It, it's just, it's so beneficial. I'm, it's so, so beneficial. Like I can't, I can't measure it enough, um, that all the intangible qualities that you would get going into FFA and stick with it. It gets hard sometimes, uh, filling out your record book. That's tough because you have so much, so much to fill out, but, um, it's just, it'll help you in the long run. You'll look back and then you'll just, um, think like, wow, I'm so glad I did that because mm -hmm. it gave me such good experience. Yeah, that's great advice, and that's really interesting, and it, it made me think of a question. Did you ever at any point in your, your time in the FFA feel like you didn't fit in because you were not agriculturally based or you weren't going into agriculture? No, because at Scales Mound, it was weird, a uh, very small school. We had like mm -hmm. 60 people in our high school, and um, basically if you weren't in FFA, like you were – you. Um, almost everyone was in FFA. Okay. And so, and there was a lot of people that weren't farmers. They lived in town and they had mm -hmm. really nothing to do with agriculture, but they joined FFA. Um, so yeah, I always felt like I fit in, fit in. It was all with my friends. All my friends were um, officers too. So it, mm -hmm. it, um, I really felt like I fit in. Yeah, very good. Well, I figured that was going to be your answer, but I wanted to hear it from you. Uh, but uh, yeah. I assume that's the case. Well, it almost sounds like at Scales Mount, if you weren't in the FFA, you, did, you didn't fit in. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right. Well, Sam, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on and joining us today. Yep, thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being here, everybody. Really appreciate it. And as always, enjoy your journey to the ultimate lifestyle business agriculture.